Cool. So Josh here, as usual, uh, I'm a YouTuber, as you know, and a course careers instructor for the kind of newish information technology course. And then we have uh, Saul here joining us today, who is taking the course. He actually got a job before finishing the course. Quick introduction, any social medias that you want to like let people know where they can find you? Yeah, follow me on Instagram at saul.farias and then follow me on LinkedIn. I'll tell Josh to, to see if he can link it down below or something. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on for an interview today. So um, Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we'll get right into it. Um, before you actually uh, started taking course careers and getting into IT, what did you kind of do before that? Uh, so before, I was just a full-time college student. So right now, I'm currently in my third year of computer science in college. Uh, but at the time before I started working in IT, I was just a full-time student. I had a full-time position as well, but it was just doing kind of like odd jobs, maybe working at a warehouse or uh, working in a mailroom. But I always had a crazy schedule. Yeah. And then normally I would ask, because we, we were kind of talking before a little bit, um, he, and he actually, like I said, he actually got a job before finishing the course. And normally I would ask, like, oh, how long did it take you to, you know, find a job before you finish the course? But in this case, um, I'll ask, like, how, how far did you get through the course before actually finding that first job? Oh, OK, yes. Yeah. So I think I made it past the OS ticket lab. Yeah, I made it past that lab. And then once I made it past that lab, I got my first interview for a job. Yeah. And that's when I really started applying to more places and just started uh, reviewing what I had already learned in the course, which was all the labs. So I just started doing all of them over and over to really kind of solidify that information in my in my head. So I would be prepared for any questions that they would ask during the interview. Gotcha. And can I ask, like, how many how many companies about do you know did you apply to, and then how many did you end up having to interview with, if you remember? Yeah. So I think like within the span of two or three days, I applied to like three hundred places, <laughs> and I got an interview for like I'd say maybe like around thirty places. Damn. So I was getting like emails. Yeah, I was getting emails back to back, like, hey, hi, Saul, like, we'd like to, like, we've seen your interview, and we're really interested in you, we'd like to schedule an interview with you. And then I'd have like those like blowing up my phone, like five a day or something. And I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. I didn't think I was going to get this much feedback. Dang. And sorry, I, I mispronounced your name. It's Saul, you said. Saul. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's, that's crazy. I, I guess you can't respond to all of those, right? Do you just like pick the ones that were good? Or how did that? How did that go? <laughs> yeah, ultimately, at the end, uh, I I made my job like I chose I chose my job before I even like went through all my choices. Like I had so many choices, I couldn't even go through all of them. Dang, that's a lot. That's crazy. Yeah. It goes to show that really like it's kind of a like James said in the last interview, it's kind of a numbers game, right? Depending on how many um, places you apply to, the higher your chances become of being um, accepted somewhere, right? Did you have to use that um, application tracking template or did you even like get that far? are in the course no i didn't know there was an application um <laughs> tracking template yeah i remember i remember i think i told uh I, I told somebody in the discord like or i told the group like hey guys like i just got my first interview and i'm getting like i'm getting a lot and and then somebody mentioned it to me like yeah well if you were using the application uh tracking template you wouldn't be having this issue and i was like what, what there's an application tracking template what Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, I really need to. I need to get on it. Yeah. It's kind of toward the end. I should probably like tell people earlier on in the course in case they just want to like, you know. But yeah, yeah. It sounds like it, it worked out in the end though, so that's that's good. Yeah, no, especially like to the extent that I did it to 200, 300 places, like you really want to keep track of like every single place you apply to, mm. just so you know, like you keep a track of like, okay, who who responded back, who gave me a no go and who said a maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's good to like keep track of all that. Yeah, exactly. It starts getting jumbled in my head after like five. So I kind of made, <laughs> I made that thing for myself. Thought it'd be useful for everybody. But yeah, so what do you, um, if you, if you can tell us uh, what company did you end up in? what kind of stuff do you do like on a day to day okay so i ended up at a company called afc sushi we sell sushi like at stores they make the sushi there at the store and then they sell them prepackaged. And my position is the it coordinator so i'm in charge of like coordinating with the vendors about um acquiring new assets or new licenses like for the company and also coordinating with other departments if I need to, uh, if we have any projects or we need uh, anything to be done. Uh, also, my day to day, I guess, 
consists of using um, an MDM service, uh, Meraki, Cisco Meraki, mm -hmm. to overview all the provision devices that we have like all over the nation because we have um, we have managers like all over the nation, so we keep track of them like using the MDM service or oh well at least their devices, yeah. yeah. Also, we keep track of all the assets like uh, the devices we've bought and the licenses we've bought. We keep track of them using an asset tracking service called Asset Sonar. Mm -hmm. So that I use Zendesk. Uh, to help out with any tickets like if somebody sends out a ticket i'll see if i can handle it either remotely or like go to their desk and then help them uh like up close to close right gotcha gotcha and then for those who don't know uh mdm stands for mobile device management and it's it's like a super super in-demand skill like if you go to linkedin and you type mdm a whole bunch of jobs will come out and if you have that in your resume you'll get you'll just get spammed uh, a lot by recruiters and then zendesk is like super mainstream ticketing system as well so you're getting like pretty pretty decent uh experience there i would say yeah um, and also what helps a lot is i think not just what i'm being exposed to but the people i'm being exposed to mm. and i feel like it's something a lot of people should be i guess aware of when you enter this kind of field you're going to be exposed to a lot of people with similar interest and they're going to be also interested in feeding your knowledge if they see that you're actually interested in learning the information right oh, yeah. so you can expect to find many people at these places that will help feed your knowledge and help you grow like for example at my position i have two wonderful people working with me the it project coordinator and the senior um, system administrator mm -hmm. they really help me a lot like if i have any questions about anything I know I can count on them. I can go up to them and they'll help me with whatever I need. So I think a lot of people should go into this field, like really just expecting, I guess, more welcoming people. And they shouldn't be so, I guess, daunted by the fact that they don't really know the information because a lot of people at the place you're going to be working at are going to be very inclined to help you if, like I said, you're very interested in learning the information. Looking at kind of like your day to day, does anything in course careers that you learned like kind of match up with what you do at work? or is there any overlap yeah so definitely os ticket and um active directory those are two that i use a lot like in my day-to-day -day. Mm. so those really helped a lot like being familiarized like with the ticketing system how, how it works how it's set up and also active directory like learning about domain controllers and servers that really helped a lot because i use that a lot in my day-to-day -day. and then if you're if you're comfortable with this uh can you talk to us about your salary like maybe how much you ended up getting and if you negotiated it at all yeah so before i was working in it i was making i think like 16 dollars an hour at the places i would work at and i'd have like crazy schedules too i mean i wouldn't look forward to going to work so there was also that right yeah but then once once I got my job offer, I was offered $26 an hour. And I remember that I hit you up to ask if I can negotiate my job offer. Yeah. Because like 26 an hour sounded good, but I was like, yeah, like if I could get more, then definitely I'm going to get more. And I remember <laughs> you told me like, yeah, like, yeah, just just um, like don't be afraid to like uh, negotiate your offer. You know, like they're interested in you for a reason. So just, you know, give them an offer. Even if it's if it sounds kind of high, give them an offer and they'll try to like meet you like kind of halfway, right? And that's what I did. I told them that I was interested in actually getting paid like thirty an hour, and they raised it to twenty eight. Mm. So you know, I got an extra four thousand dollars, right? And just by saying like what, like two sentences in an email, so it was really easy. So I'd uh, highly recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Highly, highly recommend. It's like the easiest money you'll probably ever make. Um, if you get an offer, I recommend always negotiating it. Um like he did he, the great job by the way that was very good <laughs> yeah no thank you I, like easy easy money for sure i recommend it to anybody yeah a lot of people are scared to negotiate um there's like a lot of for people watching this there's a lot of youtube videos on how to negotiate salary i even i even have one um of course if they offer like you know 25 you don't want to ask for like 75 or 50 because it's like kind of too much but yeah. there's there's like a, a reasonable amount that you can ask for and in it usually they'll meet you like part way and it's just free money essentially so great job with that that's like and it gives you like a higher starting point too also it's so good yeah yeah because uh like if you think about it down the line if you want to negotiate again you don't have to negotiate to that point because you're already at that point right yeah so yeah, like yes. let's say i started at 26 dollars an hour and then i decided to negotiate in like six months or something then i would have been starting at 28 like a lot <laughs> later on than right now right yeah. so it makes sense to negotiate as soon as possible what was what would you say like the most difficult part of the course was whether it's like technically difficult or you just didn't like it like what is like the the hardest part i guess i guess not the 
the most hardest part, but the most tedious part was just the setup of OS Ticket. And, like, it was just, uh, like, I'd say, like, 20 steps. And then, like, you had to do it, like, all the way through. You couldn't, like, shut down. Like, you couldn't close your resources or anything. Like, because if you did, you would have to start over from, like, the first step. So I think it wasn't very hard, but it was just very tedious. And I don't regret that you inputted it into, like, the program. But I'm just saying, like, it was it was very tedious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of people said this. Oh, James, uh, James said it, right, in his his last interview I yeah think i think james said it in the in the interview too yeah he was like the yeah. very horrific uh os ticket setup yeah gotcha gotcha and then did i ask you this already like how many times did you do the labs did you do them like more than once each or like how did that go yeah i did every lab i think i don't know i don't know what number of times but i did it to the point where like i didn't really have to watch the videos anymore i just like could do it by myself Gotcha. Because that's 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 how I felt that I was actually comfortable and like ready to like start working because I mean I know on the job I'm not gonna have course careers open on like watching watching your video like mm -hmm. step by step how to do things, right? So like just to make sure I really solidified like everything you were saying, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool, cool. And that's pretty much what I recommend. I don't I don't wanna be like do them five times each, but just you know, enough times to where you feel comfortable and get like an intuition and you're able to to talk about it um in the interview if you have to. And then can I ask you like this is like a a question I just like came up with in my brain. We can cut it out later if like you don't you don't want to answer it. But <laughs> like can you can you talk about how your interview went um at the place where you ended up getting hired? Like how was your experience with that? Okay, yeah. So I think just like anybody, I entered um very nervous. Uh I was like, what if these people have better candidates with like better technical experience? What if they have more experience than I do? Like, I'm new to the field, right? So it's something that had me very nervous. But when I walked in, they were very welcoming and they just got like straight to the point. You know, they were asking, why is it that I'm interested in working in the field? What my ambitions are, my ambitions are, like what it is that I hope to achieve at the company and things of that matter. Mm. And I think me just being like genuine and expressing how I was genuinely trying to improve, I guess the tech field, like I was trying to really move along in the tech field. They seen that ambition. And I think that's what really compelled them to like bring me on board with them. And I think, uh, that's the thing I'd recommend the most to anybody when they're about to have an interview. Is like, just really try to display how much passion you have, like, for what it is you're trying to achieve and mm. what it is like you're applying for. Because if they see that, they're gonna be really inclined to to bring you on their team. Like, who doesn't want a teammate who who's always motivated, who's always trying to achieve more, who's always trying to do more? Like, who doesn't want that, right? Yeah. So if you display that in your interview, they'll be golden. Yep. It's very well said, to be honest. What are what are your future plans going forward? Like with this job and like your next job, like what do you kind of see yourself doing? Okay, yeah. So my short term goal, I guess for right now, like within a year, is to try to try to become a system administrator. I'd really try to like I'd really like to, I guess, hurry along my my career because I guess like how you said, IT isn't really like regulated like other companies, like you have more, I guess you have more room to like maneuver in there. So yeah. growth is something that can happen very, very rapidly. Yeah. So yes. yeah, within a year, I, I think I'd like to achieve uh, becoming a system administrator. And then after that, once I finish my computer science degree, I'd like to start working in a software development. And then after that, I'd like to achieve my dream goal, or I guess dream position of being a machine learning engineer. That's something I'm very interested in, AI and all that, like, that's that's definitely what's coming next. So it's something yeah. I'm really trying to work towards. I should I feel I feel like I should start doing that too with like this what is that GPT chat or something that like chat AI that's out. I feel like yeah. oh my, my god, I better like get on that or something. No, yeah, uh, I think you ask it like whatever question and it'll give you like a very detailed response. Like that's crazy. And then wrapping up, uh, do you have any? advice for people who want to get into it it doesn't necessarily have to be related to course careers but just someone watching this who wants to get into tech any thoughts or like advice to them i'd say if you're really interested in joining the field then there's really nothing more to it than like josh says putting in the work putting in the hours being very consistent and constantly demonstrating that you want to learn more constantly pushing to learn more because if that's something that sounds like you, that's definitely being in tech is definitely like your realm.
if you're constantly trying to improve, you're constantly trying to learn, and you understand that you don't know everything, then this is definitely your field. So yeah, like anybody trying to join tech, I'd highly recommend it. You know, it just takes, like Josh said, it takes hours and discipline. So if you're willing to put that in, you should be golden. Yeah, super high ROI too. I mean, you, you what do you you make like twenty eight eight dollars an hour, and it doesn't take that that long to get into it you had like some knowledge beforehand and you're a smart dude but you you worked pretty hard and it it beats you know having to go to school for like four years or something right you could do it like relatively yeah. quick quickly ish and have like a decent wage which great job with that by the way and i think that's a great head start on your career you. so no yeah um i feel like many people are just kind of daunted by what's um i guess displayed on the requirements for like the job mm. like they may they may see one or two things like that they're just not comfortable like working in or they just have no experience in but like i said earlier like if you're just if you demonstrate that you're willing to learn and that you're constantly pushing for more that shouldn't be a deal breaker knowing not knowing one or two things so i don't think people should be daunted by that yeah especially if you have done something on your own like in your case for example you set up a ticketing system and you you already kind of worked with active directory and they'll see like oh this guy you know he did x y and z maybe like a b and c is like not going to be a problem for him uh, essentially and if, kind of show that you like to learn and do stuff on your own i think that's really good yeah, no, I think ultimately that's what a company is looking for. Just somebody who who's going to grow, somebody that they don't constantly have to look over their shoulder and like really babysit them, somebody that they know is responsible. And if you have those qualities, every, like you're going to have trouble not being hired, I, I think, <laughs> like honestly. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you apply to like 300 jobs in two days with a great yeah, resume. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool, cool. Yeah, well, thank you so much for doing this interview. Really appreciate it. I'm sure it's going to help uh, a lot of people out. So thank you so much. No, I really hope that, like, I really hope it does. Like, uh, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Yes, yes, no problem. All right, we'll see you in Discord probably. Yeah, see you guys.